really causing those annoying, painful, or even embarrassing symptoms, that's what we're covering today. Here's a question that many of you have been asking. What's one unexpected cause of reoccurring nosebleeds? More, there's more than one, right, Drew? There's two types of nosebleeds. One, what we call anterior nosebleeds, which occur usually in the forward third of your nose, in that so-called littles area. There's a, a plexus of arteries and veins in that spot. Your nose dries out, kids pick their nose, things like that. 90% in the front, there's an axiom, the younger you are, the more likely you are to have a forward or anterior bleed. But in a case like this, an adult who all of a sudden starts getting uh, nosebleeds, you think of what we call posterior bleeds. And these can be pretty serious. This can be a life-threatening situation. You have these large blood vessels that are coming in from the in internal carotid artery system. You have the sphenopalatine artery coming in from the external carotid system. You can get a ton of bleeding in the back part of your nose, a so-called posterior bleed. Why does it happen with high blood pressure? We don't really know, but it stands to reason that it's, these vessels are inside the head, subjected to increased pressure, may cause those blood vessels to burst. So high blood pressure is an unexpected cause, and then it's augmented by the fact if you're on antiplatelet therapy like aspirin and your blood has trouble clotting, you can have a very serious bleed. And, and it begs the question, which is how do you know? Well, with these 90 plus percent of anterior nosebleeds, I always say, you know, you gotta hold pressure. Hold pressure for, at le for a while, at exactly. least 10 minutes. Now, some books, five, 10, 15 minutes, and we, we, tell, we tell people to uh, sit up, slightly lean forward, and put pretty good pressure on the front Without of your nose. Without checking every 30 seconds, because again, right. you're trying to get it to clot. But if it's a posterior bleed, this isn't gonna do anything, because it's happening back in, exactly. in behind all that. If you, if you do it for 15 minutes, you may wanna try it again. If that's not helping, you're really feeling that blood going down the back of your throat, you need to get into the emergency room. You need somebody to really look inside the nose, shrink it down, and probably you have to pass a balloon that you pass through the nose, like so, to put pressure on the back of the nose, and then on top of that, you add nasal packing to totally fill that nasal cavity to put pressure in all those blood vessels. Even an anterior run-of-the-mill nosebleed, you're gonna get some drainage to the back of your throat, some blood. But these posterior bleeds, there's, the reason it's dangerous, there's so much bleeding, and it's because of those bigger vessels. It's, it's profuse it's, bleeding. It's like you're choking on the blood. It could scare you to death. Good stuff, Dr. Orton. Thank you.